Well, hello, The Return. This is Ralph Drawlinger. I'm the president and founder of Capital Ministries. Capital Ministries has existed since, I think, about 1996. We started our discipleship ministry of members of the California legislature back in those years, some 23 years ago now, I guess. And now we find ourselves here in Washington, D.C. with a, a new ministry that just starts this Thursday. Actually, when you see this, it'll have already started, Lord willing, to the White House senior staff members. And that's on the, uh, the throes of our existing ministry for the last three years since the Trump administration took office to the White House cabinet secretaries. That meets every week on Wednesday mornings. And that all occurred after we started a ministry about six years ago to the U.S. Senate members, which started some years after we started when we first came to D.C. in 19, oh, what was it, 2010, uh, when we started our ministry with the House members. So every week now during session, we have a in-depth Bible study that I teach and my wife does all the administration for, including the breakfast, to uh, the White House senior staff members, to the uh, cabinet members, to the Senate members, and to the House members. And those are on four different uh, one-hour sessions. And I am an expositor. I teach verse by verse. Right now we're in the book of Ephesians. As a matter of fact, this week uh, we did a special on the book of Hosea, the minor prophet Hosea, and how that's so pertinent, even to your conference. Um, maybe when I get to praying, I'll include that. But suffice to say, we're attempting to put ministries not only in D.C. with our elected and appointed officials here to grow them in their faith in Jesus Christ, but as well as put intentional, deliberate, biblically reliant disciple makers in every state capital of America. And I think now that we're into the ministries 23 years, we have about 43 U.S. state capital ministries that we've started, as well as ministries in about 24 foreign federal capitals throughout the world. We hope to put ministries, by God's grace, in all those foreign federal capitals. And our new push, really, where you could become involved, is our local government ministries. Uh, there's 40,000 incorporated cities in America, cities and counties, and virtually none of them have outposts for Christ, like you think of crew on college campuses or Youth for Christ on high school campuses or FCA with athletes. There's nothing of that sort to speak of relative to political leaders that are up and coming uh, in those local governments. Because most of our state capital leaders come from local government. Most of our U.S. federal capital leaders here in D.C. come from state capitals. So it just makes sense that if we're going to fight the left, if we're going to fight the, the forces of evil in our country, that we need to have our best expositors, our best evangelists, on the campuses of up and coming political leaders so that we have a continual supply of strong in Christ leaders in DC. Every week, in matter of fact, you can sign up at capmin.org for our weekly Bible studies. Uh, we publish 52 of these a year. This one's why believers should be involved in politics. Here's one, are you praying effectively for the elections? Here's one out of our uh, economics series, the Bible and economics, capitalism and communism. Can you reason? capitalism from the scripture. How is it that it's biblically based and communism is not? So we're deliberate about teaching expositionally the word of God weekly to our elected leaders. So we need your prayers in that regard. And we ask that you might not only sign up to get our weekly studies so you can pray through them and you can see all the sponsors, all the DC believers that sponsor our ministry on these. And you can get those for free through an email. Uh, every week and pray through as well as study through that particular pertinent to a political leader type of expositional Bible study. So I encourage you to do that. And then if you want to take even a bigger step, think about becoming a local government ministry leader. I have a curriculum of 52 of my favorite Bible studies called Oaks in Office, which is in a four volume set that you can get for free as well as weekly downloads to actually have the curriculum to lead your own ministry in your own local government 
in your own city that might be across the street from your church, but your church has never ventured out to starting an outpost for Christ in the local government. So I encourage you to consider that if you're gifted as a Bible teacher. And we'll train you. We have a whole training curriculum that we do online to get you ready for such a, a new ministry because that's where our future political leaders come from. And that's where we need our best Bible teachers to be making disciples of Jesus Christ in the political arena today. So let's pray right now together that God would raise up men and women like yourself who can be uh, exponentially increasing the number of disciples that we have in the political arena, not only here in D.C., but in state capitals as well as local government. Pray with me. Lord, we know that if my people, who are called by my name, uh, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, that you will bless a nation. That Deuteronomic, Deuteronomic, Deuteronomic promise of uh, chapter 28, that if we're obedient to you, you bless a nation. To the degree that we're not, we even see in Haggai, as I've been teaching these last several weeks here in D.C., that if the leaders, the civic leader, as well as the spiritual leader of the, the return of post-exilic Israel is not obedient to Yahweh, to your precepts, that you will withhold their harvest, that you will bring devastation on their land. But to the degree that those who name the name of Christ in public government, in public service, will be obedient to you is the degree that you do bless a nation. It's in concert with 2 Chronicles 7.14, as well as 1 Peter 4.17, which says that protos, that judgment, first begins with the household of God. So lest we look to the left and be chagrined about their antics, may we look to ourselves today first in importance relative to, if or not, we're being obedient to what you've called us to. And one of those aspects of your calling specifically is the Great Commission. May we be about aggressively fulfilling the Great Commission amongst the political leaders of our land today, that we might see more obedience of our public servants to your precepts, which we know from Haggai chapter 1 directly relates to the success or not of a nation. And so it's with that insight from Scripture that we center our thoughts this morning at this event to be pleasing unto you and that you might bring manifold blessings back to our nation, even as we anticipate the upcoming election. In Jesus' name, amen.